So I spent a little bit of time creating some additional materials and textures for the rest of my scene to kind of round it out. And I wanted to talk a little bit in this lesson about the Arnold render engine and how to optimize it so we can get a good image out of here. Again, if you wanted to render with just hardware 2.0 for time reasons or computer uh, constraints, that's fine. Um, we can go up here along the top, turn on our lighting, and we start being able to see a little bit of reflection in our glass. Um, we can get some shadows. That's not going to work as well because currently our lighting is being cast from this environment um, dome. And so we may want to put a, an additional light in there to get some shadows. Um, get some ambient occlusion to kind of tie it to the floor. Some motion blur and anti-aliasing. And we'll be able to get a reasonable looking render just out of viewport 2.0. But if we want to get a really nice looking render, we're going to have to use Arnold. And so again, I want you to prioritize getting the project done and prioritize getting the project looking good. But how you do that is like, there's a lot of ways to do that. So I did want to show you some ways to optimize Arnold in case you wanted to use Arnold. So if we go to Arnold, I'm going to use the Arnold render viewer. The reason for that is because it will update in real time. So if I hit this little play button, we will start getting a render of our scene. If I were to change my camera, it will update in real time. And this allows us to make edits to our materials and even to our render quality um, and see the results pretty quickly. Now you'll see this is a much nicer render. We're getting some really interesting lighting information here and some much nicer um, glass materials. And just in general, the lighting is better in this, but it is at a pretty substantial cost. Right now we're only 61% finished with this render. So, and we're not rendering a very large file size either, 960 by 540. So this isn't even full HD, which would be 1920 by 1080. So to render this whole thing, it's taking 28 seconds for one image. And that doesn't seem that bad until you start realizing that we're going to have to render 150, 200, maybe even 300 frames. So at 28 seconds times 200 frames, that's getting us 5,600 seconds. If we divide that by 60, that means that's 93 minutes, or if we divide that by 60 again, an hour and a half. So that's a long render, considering this isn't even full resolution. If this render were, you know, 1920 by 1080, so let's imagine 120 seconds times 200. That's 24,000 divided by 60 divided by 60. That's six and a half hours to render 200 frames of animation. So these seconds start to count. They start to add up. And anything we can do to reduce the amount of time it takes a render to complete will help us. Um, it's not uncommon for people to literally render for days. And um, I wanna try to give you some options to still be able to get a good looking render without having to do that. So a couple of the things that are affecting this is in the sky dome light. Now this part I'm getting ready to show you doesn't necessarily affect the render time, but it may affect some of your decisions. So right now the background is a little busy because we're still seeing that image on the sky dome light. Um, we can decide to turn that off and still retain the lighting information. We can do that just by going down to visibility and turning off the camera visibility. And so we'll still keep the lighting, but now it just renders this as black. In fact, it's actually rendering it as black and transparent. So if I wanted to composite this onto a blue background or something like that later in Premiere, then I can do that. And you can see that if we look at our different channels in the Arnold Render Viewer, Right now we're looking at red, green, and blue. If we just look at the red channel, you'll see that all of the white areas are red. The green channel and the blue channel 
And then if we click it one more time, we'll see the alpha channel. And this is the transparent and opaque parts. So the areas that are white are going to render as visible and the areas that are black are going to render as invisible. So that means we can use this in Premiere to create a different composite of this image if we would like. So let's go ahead and go back to our color channel. I'll go ahead and leave mine on for right now. It's not that bad, um, but sometimes the backgrounds can be a little distracting or just not be the environment you want your scene to be in. Now, one of the reasons our render is taking so much time is because Maya is calculating so many different data points. So if you notice, we set earlier, we set our Sky Dome light to five samples, which means there, it's casting out five packets of light um, for every um, photon, which is a, a way of calculating how light bounces. If I change this back down to one, we're going to get a much faster render, but we're going to see some of this really nice, smooth qualities of the shadows start to go away. It's also probably gonna mess up our glass. So if I put my samples down to one, my render is going to go a lot faster, but at the cost of the quality. So now you'll see we're getting some graininess inside the bowl. We're getting some graininess on the side of the milk carton. Um, the whole thing is just looking very gritty and grainy. Um, and so that's one of the reasons we turn those samples up, but it saved us eight seconds a frame. So that's a big deal. So one of the things we can do is, is we can be um, careful about how many samples we use. So instead of using five, maybe we could try three. And that may not take us, that may not give us a huge um, advantage in terms of render time, but it may give us a few seconds. Now, a couple of other things you may notice is down here along the bottom, we have these samples. It says three, two, 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 two. Um, that's a different type of sampling. And I'll show you how we can use that to speed up our render as well. Oh, what did I do? So if I go to my render settings, so you'll say, wait, we're, we're at 23 seconds of render now. So that saved us quite a bit of time. Now, if I go to my render settings, I'm currently in the Arnold renderer. And so my common tab is where I would change stuff like my resolution. Just for efficiency right now, let's go ahead and leave it where it is. If I go to the Arnold Renderer tab, you'll see that we have some options for sampling. Basically what these options are saying is for each of those little samples that are being cast out from our light, where are they being calculated? And so some of these things we're not even using, like we're not using subsurface scattering or volume indirect right now, but it's still using some of our samples on that. So let's just turn those down to zero. So we were at 23 seconds a frame. I have a feeling it's going to be a touch faster now, but probably not significantly. Now, the big number that you're going to notice is this camera AA. Now this is going to be multiplied by all of the numbers underneath it. So if I turn this number up to four, then it's going to multiply that across the diffuse and the specular and the transmission. We need transmission because we have this um, transmission going on with the glass. We need specular because we have highlight and diffuse is the color channel. So that's where we're getting like this really nice smoothness on our milk carton. And each of those are being multiplied by three. So what I could try is right now we're at 22 seconds a frame. If I took this down to two, my render is going to go much quicker, but it's going to sacrifice some of the quality in a few areas. So you'll see now my render is 10 seconds for this image. Now I lost a little bit of detail inside of my bowl and inside of the milk carton because of the diffuse. 
So maybe I could turn that up just a little bit more and go up to three. And so that helped a little bit. Now my render time is 12 seconds a frame. Now that's a big difference. If I did 12 seconds times 200, that's 2,400. And if I divide that by 60, that's 40. Divide that by 60. That's taking me less than an hour to render all of my images. One of the things that I would say is if you're going to render an Arnold, I will allow you in some of these projects to render a slightly scaled down version. So instead of having to render 1920 by 1080, maybe we could consider something like the HD 720. Um, I would prefer 1920 by 1080 just because that's going to give you the most amount of quality. But the problem with 1920 by 1080 is the render time is going to be much higher. So even at this scaled back version, it's still going to take quite a bit of time to get this full image rendered. However, we're going to get a lot of information in this and this is pretty much the standard video size now for HD. So take that into consideration when making decisions about rendering. Again, prioritize quality and prioritize making sure you get the project done. Those are the two biggest things to consider. Um, if you don't think you're going to get the prior, if you don't think you're going to get the project done in time, then you may need to scale back on the render quality just a little bit or consider using hardware 2.0. But as you can see, this is a really nice looking render. Um, so I encourage you to at least try this and see if it's something that is possible in this project. Again, my render time on this now is 51 seconds for one frame at 1920 by 1080. And so if I did 51 times 200, that equals 10,200 divided by 60, 170 divided by 60, that's almost three hours. So if you can sacrifice three hours of render time, this is one of the ways you can speed up your renders.